Hey everyone, it's me. I'm going to be showing you how to do some polymer clay charms. Now you can use a various amount of different products. I've got a couple to show you. Um, the first one that um, I'm quite intrigued by, um, a lot of people say that Sculpey isn't the best polymer clay to use, but I have just recently purchased the Primo. and. Um, this seems to be pretty decent. It's nice and soft, it's a good consistency. I mean, I've used the white a little bit, I've used a chunk of the white, so that's sort of what I used. Um, I've also got the classic Fimo, and I've also got, um, well, I've got the Fimo effects, and I have also got, so I'll just take these out. The Sculpey 3. So I mean I've got quite a range of different branded like Fimo, Sculpey, Primo. So I've got quite a various amount of different um, clays. Now the one problem with having lots of different clays is that when you come to bake it, say I'm going to use this as an example, I made a snow cone. Um, this is Fimo and this is uh, Primo. Now you have to bake the Primo at 130 and the top bit, the snow cone, you have to bake that at 110 I believe. So the one thing that you have to be careful with is that you don't overheat the, the, the cooker and that you don't um, like underheat it. So if that makes any sense. But yeah. So that's an example. It's not baked yet. I'm still sort of working on it. It's not something that I'm too happy with at the moment, but I will try my best to salvage it so I don't like wasting things. So I'm just going to show you some tools that you're going to need. The first tool that I think is essential is a plastic, um, it's almost like a plastic scalpel. Um, it's blunt, so it's not going to cut you, um, but it's good enough to use just to uh, scrape off any imperfections, maybe scrape off uh, some dirt off the clay and then you've got this side which is good for matting it down and things like that. So I'm going to lower the screen and um, here's another thing, I have this wooden block, um, this is originally, it's got little holes there and there for dishes uh, so this goes in the middle of a table with like salsa and stuff but I've turned it over and it's a flat um, surface which is good because it's varnished as well so you can just clean it and um, there's no problem at all really with cleaning so yeah I'm just going to lower the screen so yeah this is the, the block of wood so I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these um, I'm going to bring them all out actually to show you I've made a couple of these um, I've made three. They're these little chocolate charms that have got bites taken out of them. So like this. And they've all got like, this one's got pink filling, this one's got green filling, and that one's got pink filling. I'm going to show you how to make it with the, um, with the pink filling. So these, are, so this is what I'm going to show you how to make today. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to take a damp cloth. I just damp um, a normal kitchen towel and you just want to wipe the board clean and then you want to dry it with a, with a, with a dry tissue. I like that. Okay, then you're going to want to take a scalpel. Now this is the blade 23 um, and so this is, this is a jeweler's uh, scalpel so it's a professional one so you want to keep your fingers well away from the blade so the first thing that you're going to want to take is you're going to want to take this now this is the uh, Sculpey I think is this Sculpey? yeah this is Sculpey and this is in what is this in? Dusty Rose so I'm going to take the scalpel because this is quite tough this one's quite hard but with the scalpel you get a nice clean cut and you don't sort of break everything off. So I've just cut a small block from there. I'm also going to cut a small block from this one as well. And this is from Primo. This is in 
burnt umber, so it's just a brown. And averagely the same size. So about the same size. And then last but not least, I'm going to take this one by Sculpey. Now this one's pretty much all cut up, but this one is in tan. And that's going to be the drizzle, the drizzling top. So you literally need about that much, not even that really. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is just take the two, the pink and the tan, so the dusty rose and the, and the tan away, and you're just going to be left with the burnt umber. So you're going to want to roll this out, like this, into a little sausage. Okay. Then you want to start twisting it into like a spiral. Until you get like a snail shell. And then pinch it together and that will make your flat base. Because it's circular and you're not rolling it out and getting it stuck onto a rolling pin or something but this is just a way that I do it it's not everybody's way now the good thing about the block is it doesn't move too much I mean I've used the the it's like a red sheet that comes with the with a Sculpey not Sculpey a, a Fimo set and um, that wasn't too good because you have to kind of sellotape it down Take the scalpel and on the, on the surface, on the side, just gently lift that up, like this, and then just, just keep pulling so you get a thin brown sheet. You can use a pasta machine for this, you don't have to do it this way, but I prefer to be able to sort of... Um, do it myself so that I can feel where it needs pinching and things like that. So now you've got the nice circle shape. Choose the side that you're going to actually roll with. So I'm going to use this as the inside of the chocolate because it's just a little bit more. Um, it's not as smooth as the other side. Now take your pink um, clay, move this to the corner of the block, and before you start rolling, you're going to want to take a damp towel again, clean off that area that you were using so that you don't get any brown clay into the pink. So now just start to roll. Now this one's a little bit more tough than the other clays. Um, I think I feel like you have to really work with it. But you're going to want to make a ball like that. So you've got a nice pink ball bring your brown back in, put the pink in the middle and then just start to wrap it. I'm going to turn it round so you can see. So you want to just wrap it round like that so that the two edges meet and then pinch down the two sides like that. should look a bit like a, sh a strange pasty shape and then you can cut off with the scalpel any excess brown clay because you don't want there to be an uneven amount of brown clay on a certain side you want it all to be an even layer now you can do all different shapes for these chocolate they're like chocolate truffles you can do any shapes you can do circles you can do squares you can do uh, moon shapes you can do just the, an oval shape, um, any kind of shape really, but this is just my preference. Now roll it in your hands. You're not going to dis-shape the pink inside because it's such a thin brown layer. Here comes my sister singing. Hey. <laughs> so now you've got your nice brown surface around the pink. You're just gonna, I'm gonna make it into an oval shape. Well, not an oval shape, more of like a circle shape chocolate, because I don't have any circle shape chocolates, I've got square ones. So I'm just going to shape it. 
And what I'm doing here is I am just almost like I'm just gently touching the sides and the surface just so that I get rid of any fingerprints in the circle shaped chocolate and that does get rid of the, the fingerprints in the chocolate okay so once you're happy with the shape and the, and the the consistency and that there's no fingerprints you can move on to your tan and just gently twist that off of the board and start rolling the tan uh, clay now I should have wiped the board I just realized I should have wiped the board but it's okay nothing seems to be transferring or anything so we're in luck Ooh, drop the clay now right, that one's been a bit stubborn that piece just keep like you want to make a really thin strip with this one um, and that is to make the drizzling this clay just breaks it's okay because we can use it again but it just, I think you need to warm this clay up very well or otherwise it just sort of breaks off okay so now you've made it about the size of about 10 centimeters that should cover the chocolate truffle you just want to put it on one side and press down and as you're twisting the drizzle press down so that it stays on the truffle now you can do that and then leave it like that but what I like to do is with excess you can make the square kind of the overlapping look that you can get on chocolates like that now press it all down very gently though because you don't want to dish shape any of the chocolate underneath or the, the truffle underneath and because you've got no excess you've got clean edges and clean finishes on that drizzle now finally just gently twist it off again now what you can do is if I move that tan ex excess away you can take your scalpel now choose an edge that you want to cut so I'm going to choose this edge you want to cut a small triangular shape out of the clay and you get that nice it's a very clean cut if you use a decent scalpel and you get that little extra bit which is quite cute for um, a cake slice or something you could make that into but now what we're going to do is we're just going to press down and using our blunt one using the blunt scalpel just make some teeth marks, some teeth indentations into the truffle. My sister's peering over my shoulder now. I'm going to use this side because it has a bit more texture. And you just want to drag the colour down. drag that colour and make those teeth marks just like that and there you have it you've made a chocolate truffle now to make a loop because I tend to make with the chocolate truffles that I've made in the past like this one for instance well that is a circle one, I have made a circle one and um, I make a loop out of the Fimo oh, there you go, I'll make a loop out of the Fimo and um, just tap my sister on the thigh to tell her to shush <laughs> um, so I use the excess tan and then I just turn it over and I press one corner loop it round press the other corner, take the scalpel 
and gently because you don't want to go through the chocolate as well take off any excess press it down using your blunt scalpel just gently press just so that it stays in place and so that it doesn't fall off once it's been baked but there you have it you have a chocolate truffle I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you like it. Um, if you want any more videos like this, let me know. This is also made from Fimo. Um, it's a rainbow with some glittery clouds. My sister's being a bit strange today. If you want to see how to make this, then let me know. Um, and in my last video, I showed this. Um, I'm selling this on Etsy, so if you are interested, go to Etsy. I'm going to link my page, the Etsy page, to most videos now. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you want to see more tutorials like this, then let me know. And yeah, thanks guys for watching, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye guys.